our next game, Secret versus G2. Now, Secret have been flawless so far in Europe League, but the main question is, can they keep it up against the former world champions? So now that I'm saying former world champions, talking about G2, they might have not been performing the way we expect from a former world champion. No, today I'm going to start with G2 being quite questioning of how they've been playing. Because now we saw Virtus Pro in the game earlier, and they seem to struggle. G2 struggled against that team. And the only team that they've really been dominating this stage is Ants. And Ants haven't had that good of a stage either. So, like, we're looking at the performances and head-to-heads from previous games. It seems like G2 are actually quite low down there at the moment, and something just is not clicking for them. And I Go on. And I think the reason for that is, is I genuinely think they're a little bit lost in the sort. Yep. I think that they're obsessed with being the front runners in terms of strategy and in terms of being the best players, that they forget what a basic win condition yep. is. And it seems stupid to say, right? But I, when, when I look at this team, individually, they make so many questionable decisions. Yep. If they're under a little bit of pressure, they make lots of stressed and bad individual decisions that opens the round for the opponent. And honestly, if they're in front, they make some really risky decisions when they could just win the round out by pure numbers. And they give away so much that you don't expect. And I think that's because they are a little bit too lost in the sauce. You're giving me flashbacks. <laughs> that's for sure. Because that's exactly the same issues they have been struggling with for such a long time. They they have a hard time wanting to play the absolute most like basic team play. Yeah. They don't want to set up crossfires. Well, they do, and they say that they know how to do it, but sometimes it's it's like lacking because it's just practice and we don't need to take it that seriously. This is when they need to show that maybe now they need to. Yeah, sure, they made it fourth in SI, but it's starting to look worse and worse, and it's not like from that SI win 2023, it's quite rocky, I would say. Yeah, they've performed well, but it's G2 we're talking about. It's not well by their standards. It's not G2 standards. Yeah. And those we know about, because those are winning every single event. And we're seeing them slightly, even slowly, but surely, maybe not being the best even in the region anymore. They like to make it difficult for themselves. Yeah. I think they've qualified two majors before, but they had like a 4% probability of qualifying yeah. it. They don't want to give their friends a heart attack like that. But then again, their opponents, a team that didn't make it to a major last year, but is going through a beautiful globe so far this year. It's looking absolutely amazing. For yeah, that's exactly what it is for Team Secret. It is a huge glow up, I think. They've recruited seriously smartly. We'll talk about uh, Jume and Adrian, the two new players. Don't know why I was going to say Miracle there. I think they've recruited smartly. They've got the right players in the right positions, even including Adrian on the support. And it's, they're passing every single test we keep putting at yep. them each week, each game day. They keep passing it with flying colors. Yeah. We keep kept giving them like these challenges, you and me. We said it on the first play day. Have they had enough time to do something? And then on the second play day, we, or for them the second play day against Virtus Pro, we asked again, do they have enough depth to play the same map? They did. And then we see them one more time, and they're demolishing wild. So we've kept giving them the challenges. They've kept living up to them. Now comes an maybe even bigger, because now it's like you go up against former world champions, so now nerves might play into it a little bit more. But I really think that they have a really solid structure and solid team. Everything makes sense. I'm really excited to see them play, because whatever map they bring G2 to, G2 probably won't know exactly what's going to hit them. Say you're tuning in for the very first time with the, all the information that we're giving you, it would seem that this should be an easy game for Secret. But however, historically, it seems that it has been going in T2's way quite often. Yeah, I mean, look at that. We've taken you all the way back to 2022. These are the fixtures between the two teams. Three best of threes, three best of ones. G2 have won everything apart from one best of one where they lost it in overtime in 2022. So based on history, G2 should be favorites, but based on form, it absolutely is team secret. And it's not but it's not just the form though. Like, sure, that's part of it, but looking at the new team that Secret has, I think they are looking better than ever. I don't think they've ever looked this solid because there's something they have gone on adventures. They've been finding a secret scroll in some temple or something. I don't know what it is, but everything seems to be clicking and they they seem to have good coordination, which is very hard to come by, especially when you're this fresh as a roster. I mixed you in there too. <laughs> I do think that this iteration of the Secret roster is probably one of the strongest that we have seen so far. And I feel like a really important factor of your team, of course, is that support staff, that backline of your team. We'll have a look at two of the backline players of these rosters. We have a head-to-head -head between Adrian and Uno. Yeah, so we've got the head-to-head. -head. These are the two, quote-unquote, hard support players of the roster. Both of them previously, I guess, entry players. Uno back in the yeah. day was an entry player. And I think both get aggressive, but particularly Adrian, he's come in and he's absolutely blown away because he's putting up stats that you wouldn't expect of a sport player whilst also getting the plants. He's getting one VXs, big multi-kill rounds, big on KD, big on entry as well. And he's really impressing us so far. 
the stats speak for themselves, but there are other things to this. We're kind of looking at the, well, Uno's been support for a while now, so it's yeah. more of the older generation of players versus the newer generation of players. So it, we're seeing something revolutionary because now support players, this is probably, well, it's been for a while, but it's the first time that we really see it where support players have to be extremely vocal. Usually you used to have the in-game leader in the back line. It wasn't usually the hard support. It was more of a flex player. Now the in-game leaders and the like shot callers for the end game of the round, so like your win condition, your mm -hmm. plant, whatever it is you want to achieve, usually falls on your hard support. And both of these two players are very vocal and they talk about what they want. Alamo has said countless of times, Uno is helping me so much with the end rounds, and it's showing results. Now we need him to step up maybe a little bit further, because it's looking a bit rough for them. These two teams played against each other in the Malta Cyber Series, where G2 knocked Secret out of the competition, and the maps we had were Cafe and Bank. Consulate would have been the decider for getting it today. Yeah, both teams very, very high preference on Consulate, so I suppose when it would have been the decider in a best of three, you expect to see it in a best of one. Both teams like it. The big thing for me here is that G2 absolutely love this map. They've got a great record on it, and crucially, they're starting defense. Why is that important? Consulate is really defender sided, and G2 are a huge momentum based team. So, if you're a G2 fan, you could probably take some quite happiness in that they might be able to get a good lead and then hang on to it. I think that G2 have done a really good map band phase here because there's two maps that they love Consulate and Skyscraper, and they get to choose the side on both of them. So they had done a really, really, really good map band side. And I think it's really brave by Secret to allow it to come down to that. And then choosing, I'm assuming they really wanted Consulate. That's what I'm going to put it at. They're not going to get that out banned. But it's brave of them to give those two maps to G2 and give them defense on both sides because they know that they can pick it. Yep. You know what? Our game is ready. So we're going to bring back our casters and we don't even need to ask them any questions. We just get to bring them back in, of course, we're saying hi again to Hap and to Fluke. And when they'll be with us, I can actually just throw it away immediately to you two for Secret what? and G2. Oh, I was going to say... Favorite and Freshbian. I don't know. I've... And Freshbian. I'm trying to... <laughs> it, that's what that's they are. My name. That's our death. <laughs> no, we are going in now and we're going to find ourselves on Consulate as they did say. It is a defender-driven map at the minute. A lot of the meta is, but it shaped itself into this situation where people are still trying to piece together how to break the early defense tries. It hasn't been tried and tested. It's come in at the same time. We've had one of the biggest meta shifts over the past, like, six months or so to a year that we've had in a long time. This is going to be a tough opening half for Secret. It is, but, you know, at the same time, it was mentioned before as well, their form seems to be doing slightly better than G2's. Let's see if they can keep that up as well, but... There's yeah. something that I don't think was truly really harped on about, though, there, is who they've had to play to get to this position. Yeah, I was looking at it as well. Because G2, you know, they've gone against BDS, BP, uh, Fnatic, and Ents, right? And the one game that they've sort of won cleanly was against Ents, 7-3, and then Fnatic, they won it, but it was 8-7. BP, they almost got out of the way. Secret have had a brilliant start to the season. They've had one of the best starts this roster has ever had. To a competitive season, or this, even this org, it's been wild Ents and VP. It's not really been these sort of high, terrifying teams. This week for Secret, G2 into BDS. This is gonna be the toughest week a lot of teams around the world would ever have to play in Rainbow Six. I love how Secret's been playing. This is where they can sort of cement that. It is one of those true tests kind of moment, right? Like. Of course, G2 aren't on their, like, the, the, their, like, fire that they have been, but they did still come in fourth at the sixth Invitational, and they haven't really made any changes. So they should still be able to be a good benchmark to that extent. And especially when we're on a map that, you know, I mean, all G2 love that haven't really played it that much themselves yet this year, only three plays. Um, the consulate. It, it, it became, it's no longer, like, it's not a fundamental map like Oregon or Clubhouse would be. But it has changed a lot since, like, the rework to come through. Um, and there, there's quite some different kind of strategies you can use. You have, you know, the quick in, quick out up top that often gets done. But the completely opposing admin take as well. Uh, you know, verticality when we're in the middle side. So there's a lot of variety in approaches here on the attack that Team Secret will have to show they can master. 
over the next couple of rounds. Budgie, seeing if he can get a bit of a free gift on the back end of a repel here. He's going to wait until that audio starts to pop because, oh, how do you compete against it? Is he going to get gifted? They're on the right, but they know that the angle is just as wide. One out. Miracle removes Virtue early on, and that means that wall's going to stay soft. Doki gets sat down by Adrian in the same second, and G2 sort of, well, you know, wanted to wave their hand at the windows and say, come fight us. And here, Secret have gone, sure, Benja. He's going to move up. And a bit of revenge on the swing of the top. There's another second drone comes out towards him, pre-firing the angles. Will he decide to pull back? Yes. Just into his meeting room. It's gonna say, there's no real reason for him to stay up here as he just gets swung on. Instantly decides to fall back. Flashbangs come through. He's completely blinded now. Another one will follow up on it. Doom will not be able to find a kill onto Alamar, but I believe in the meantime, we did see another kill to come on through. As you know, we'll find a shotgun kill onto uh, Doom to run through. Benja did some big frame five, but Adrian just comes around the corner and cleans him up. Alamar's still holding on above the hatch. Now, the site does require some vertical pressure to still be applied at this point, but with a 4-2 to two split, they can afford to set themselves up for 2-2 two, two versus 1s and just sort of body keep Alamau off Attack the side itself. The Adrian raids the kid over. He's on a tear and he wants to see if he can try and tear Alamau across as well. How aware are they as Gruby goes down but gets back up? Uno does cement the kill as the follow through, but Adrian gets his third for the round. As I said, he left the kick because he wanted the body. A miracle gets the last. I mean, I said, this is going to be the map. This is going to be the game to prove secret of one of those top dog teams. And if they've made a believer out of our desk, more rounds like that, I think they'll make a believer out of everybody. That's for sure. Pretty solid round coming through there. Almost no mistakes made. Good teamwork happening as well. And like a single fight taken where they didn't have the advantage on the player out there. And thus, that first round goes in the way of Secret. G2, probably not happy with that. We'll uh, also, at the same time, they'll realize it's only round one. Things happen. Now going up to the top floor, not continuing their double down on the rotation. I mean, fair enough. This is generally the first pick site you'll see a lot of teams roll with. You can get a lot of a solid lockdown as it sort of used to be. Keep your arms off the, the two takes you alluded to the one where you can sort of zip in on towards the ceo console window zip out get the utility then go for the plant the same way if you can conceptually think about it at home of when you're trying to plant bank in the basement and you sort of go in bait the c4s go out you do that but out of a window which is the role that savage is going to try and play towards the top of ceo the other take He's an admin take, a sort of classic one. Push yourself across and just plant just on the inside of the door on meeting. But this operator with this selection and setup, I feel like we're about to have a minute and a half to two minutes of juggling. It's the good old mini game that we get on a map like Consulate. Um, and it's basically due to the lack of other ways to, to really challenge this. Um, and, and talking about ways to challenge this, there's no smoke on the board for G2. There's, there's two Nitro cells and a Solace down below. If they manage to find Doki and basically hinder a lot of the opportunity to, to find like vertical angles and anybody out there trying to go for a plan, this could be a very successful plan really quickly. You know, almost caught. As he pulled himself back out of admin, and there's the plant. They're going to go for the top. They're going to see if they can stick it. They drew all the attention towards the other side. G2, hello. C4 is a little Better too late. Working. There's a little bit of damage towards Savage, too, but a post-plant retake on this is so hard. What G2 has is a lot of players, and they've got to get themselves outside like that. Brilliant play from Alamau to get the double. Uno's going to stick. Groovy is in the other side of the world. He just can't make it, G2. Realized in the final seconds what was happening, but built on the back of the double jump. That Alamau engagement goes away from them. You assume the round might follow. Very snappy take, very snappy retake. That said that the retake was even snappier than that take itself. They they realized they knew they had to go for it. As long as you let those players stay alive on the wind that repels, there's no way that you're going to be getting away with that one. So a great player, a great retake to come through from G2. 
It's basically a blinking you missed it kind of deal as soon as that defuser went down. And thus they'll continue as they find themselves at around on the board. Again, close game against Fnatic. 8-7 uh, loss. Uh, win, sorry, come through. Then they had the, uh, um, the only the clean victory on ends with the 7-3. But the complete beatdown against BDS, like like the seven two on the other hand, ten seconds to insertion. We've, we've seen G two literally go back and forth, uh, and I think that the first round left and the second round are a great example of their form so far. Attackers are heading out to defuse a bomb. I guess it's one of those things where you can go back and and you know maybe sort of get the taste of where things went wrong. Obviously, usually those sort of set up claymores underneath all of the hop out windows just to buy yourself some safety. It can be red, but at the same time, I'm wondering if Secret saw an opportunity and took it a little bit too sharp and for their own sake and could have maybe prolonged things, especially with the opening pressure they've been able to build on the other side. Still, one apiece, D2. Great bit of rotation and retake leads them into this, fighting even once again. Four C4s gives you an idea of how they're going to try and hold on to some of that vertical. How will Savage be used though? Is um, Damos going to act as a roam clear here where they spot out a player and they decide to just try and hunt him down at a 44 and realize, oh, he's on the site. We can cancel that. Go on to the next. Or is this quite literally going to be a 1v1 me scenario? Maybe like one of the strong points of G2. Multiple ways the operator can be used. It's still very new, so you know there, there's always that. I mean, of course, it's limited by the ability. Oh, miracle taking some shots vertically there. Nothing too major, of course. The adrenaline search still around. The savage swings around the corner. We'll find a very opening. Knows about someone potentially being around as well. Dude, the swings gets to confirm eventually. The great will not catch him. He falls back as well down to spiral. Just gets away with it there. Uno Doom three paces further forward, and he would have been able to get the kill maybe and at least protect the swing round. That was a lot of slow motion decisions being made by Uno there. It's not easy to dance on a grenade. But a minute, a four versus four, and they still are uh, trying to wrest the control of the vertical that they want. They have the ram, they have the spark, they have everything to open it swiftly. Reloading. That leads in then to actually the park pressure on the site, and that work is some of the stickiest and the trickiest. Miracle loses an engagement that he knew was coming. Virtue. Great take. Very clean one. Mirror window to be opened up is going to put in on a bit of a... A precarious situation here. Knows about someone on yellow. Reach, however, coming through. Zoda canisters not used. That means wall has opened up. And Uno is one of the last lines of defense. To get it with Virtue out there, you see him on the right hand side of your screen, watching behind the second mirror window. Now smokes are starting to come through, and they need to pull through. Groovy gets one kill with the LMG. LMA tries to get a nitro cell into the right spot. Will it land? No, it will not. 45 counting down just now as LMA pushes through. Another retake will be attempted as Virtue finds one. Not the second, however. It's an effective 1v2 situation. Make that 1v3 as Adrian gets revived by the Adrenaline Surge. And as Benja chases outside, they know exactly where he is right now. Vertical is on play. June gets the final kill. Great idea, a secret there. They knew that they sort of lost that body. They had to try and make it come together. They trusted that G2 would sort of be playing on the back line, letting them try and push in. You can see a little bit of shaking their heads there. Obviously being dropped based on the back of traces fired through smoke. It's rough. It happens, but... The lead in the engagement, if you'd have maybe silently gone for the rotate, pushed, they'd have had the split angle, the C4 getting caught in the middle of a, you know, absolute blanket of smokes down there in the garage. It was just that sort of singular moment, really. Here, Uno getting the lead in. And this, raining through, and just caught on the back of traces is all it really is. Tracing the traces, right? to brag but the amount of kills i got by you know tracing back the tracers and just firing back at them it's, it's just so unfortunate yeah, as well though it's like you, you, you just pre-fire that position you walk away you get pre-fired back it's like okay well five seconds to go skill issue i guess
that point. It's just unlucky timing. Attackers objective. Oh, one secret. Yeah, find themselves the second round, so they're still leading or leading again, rather. Again, the desk seems to heavily favor them over G2 currently. Um, it's a good test to see where both these teams are at currently. I mean, it, it's also a bit beyond that as well. It, you have this break form that a lot of teams are having. It's outside of really BDS, none of the expected teams have been delivering results. B2, BP, Wolves, they're sort of up and down. And you're getting these surprise strikes from teams like Fnatic that have had a really good resurgence. ITB being able to pull the game today. But Secret have just been locked in. I think they've taken everybody a bit by surprise here on the ride through. There's a great collection of talent that's really coming together in these takes and these holds. The drop and the quick zip in towards the site. The fight is all a go. Miracle swings round. Savage gets the knife, but it's two down for G2 here. Looking for the shotgun follow around on yellow, but they've actually left. Caught out. There's a player to his left. He's inside the F dot. Throws at the worst possible time. Alamau. He's able to freely move around the tracks thing as Doom is left alone. But not for very long. Doki gets the lockdown and, well, they had to throw it at the side, throw it at the wall and hope they could take a round. Fortunately for them, it was red by G2. Yeah, quick attempt there, uh, quickly punished for it. So anyhow, you know, the two quick rounds we've had basically went to G2's way. Uh, one of them, of course, the plant and just a quick retake to come through. This one was kind of a 3 to one execute as well. Not quite working into their favor. Might, you know, make you think, okay, so if you, if you go more methodical, if you go more steadily at the approach, you find that success. If they, if they can continue that, you know, they should not have any issue finding yet another round or maybe even two. I mean, that the first kill swung around with the knife and then suddenly everything was gone. The shotgun, if it had followed around the corner, might have been able to get the warden on the top of yellow. But again, that still leaves you in the three sort of versus two, two versus two. As you said that secret, they've gone for these quick plays on a couple of these rounds. They've gone for these, let's put the pressure onto G2. G2 enjoys thriving in the chaos at point. Five seconds to insertion. Now, I believe G2 is the only team currently um, that is inside the E-Well whose attacking win rate is higher than their defensive win rate. Which is quite funny, <laughs> knowing that the meta has been dubbed like the defense meta by like 60-40, something like that. And that's something you see back with a lot of these teams, like the defensive win rates are like 20% higher than their attacking win rates at that point. Um, team Secret, actually one of them, 55 on attack, 84. 0.6 on the fence, so almost 30%. And that means that if Secret managed to get yet another round out here, statistically they should be doing fine as Uno going for the challenge up on the copy window. Was forced to fall back as well as Ball. His cover is gone already. He's just alone out there. Flash brings were starting to flood in. We even have a Deimos waiting down below. Haven't gone. With a quick attempt at a body this time around. Admin control is theirs. Without the play on it, they're going to go for the cover and the plant just at the bottom of your screens there at the top of that staircase, which is the lockdown position. The shotgun of Alamau is going to hold on to as best as they can. The first thing, securing the vending corridor, getting yourself the wiggle room and probably rotating someone towards the top of spiral as well, just to make sure that any players that try to rotate back around to retake, you can lock them out. There's Savage doing exactly that job I talked about. This is a, a important fight that he makes sure he doesn't come out on the wrong end of. And with the initial drone, it's going to take care of the entire... Actually, no, I believe it has been uh, muted out. Yeah, so there's one on the back of it. It's going to be very difficult to remove that one. Jim's going to give it a second attempt. Needs to detonate it a bit earlier. There you go. It's going to remove a bit of the uh, boarding onto that wall. Grenade will take care of the other one. The Savage is coming up with the 44. Just gets his head removed. The second one by Benja. Completely blinded. We'll find Ruby anyway before the first one falls on G2. Three apiece and Virtue at least... Keeps it into their favor here for G2. Retakes the top, but these FNATs have been so problematic for these approaches. Just shows the raw power of that operator to control these high traffic areas. As they said, all of this open space is the requirement. Adrian's been able to get himself towards the plant spot. He's just going to get him the cover of those canisters. Make sure no one can swing around. Doom's going to come in close for the 
close support. They're trying to push for the retake, Attackers but P2 right. knows that they'll have some time to do it after they slip out. The c is too late, and so is the Defenders rotate. Have located the diffuser. Doki gets the catch. Only Adrian left. He's down the stairs. There's one. There's a C4 to say no more. G2, sit up, take notice, and take a round. And almost making it out there on, on that post plant, just to so a bit quicker on that retreat, might have been able to, to find themselves into that safety, or if they had another player out there, they could have maybe watched that flank. And then, you know, you kind of start coming back towards that numbers game. Jeep is so quick with that retake, knew exactly where these players were as soon as it was a 1v3. One goes for the swing, the other for the C4. There's no way you're going to be able to find both at the same time. And with that, it is that G2 round to come through, finding themselves in the lead. Savage out there with the 44. I'm not quite sure what he was looking for. I don't know if he was in hunt. But you would assume you'd rather have like the, the high, higher rate, uh, fire rate kind of gun to just, you know, top off the top of the bar, see if you can find the head. You know, I'm just not sure why the 44 was used there. If it was like a conscious choice for like maybe penetrating some floor uh, walls or anything like that, or if it was just, well, you had it out because he just finished a hunt or something like that. That's down for you to piece together, my friend. I'm here to defuse a bomb. Talk about G2 putting themselves ahead. Three to two. The step back around here, and is it truly deserved? It's hard to gauge because they said on the desk before this, each were a very momentum based team. They get themselves locked in quite quickly based on how they're performing mentally. And, and you know, I guess we'll get the idea of how much of that is on the secret side. It's been a very balanced game from Secret pretty much throughout the entirety of this. Two rounds ago, I think only about two players from the side of G2 really had any kills. It's been a big return for the rest of the once world-beating roster. LML just getting himself a bit closer to the support here. They want to ensure that they take this engagement with multiple players, with multiple players. Ruby's at the top of yellow. The swing is savages though on the back end and well, Benja, how long is he going to be able to sit here? Not very long. Groovy gets one. Benja goes for the retake. Reloads close and somehow gets a second. Is that three? He's out of bullets, but he's got a knife. Two versus two. There's a drop to other all the way to the top. And I mean, as I said, they build themselves on momentum. Everybody is capable of those moments, but what a swing back from Benja. It's the second time in two rounds he gets away with that as well. Like the previous round was completely blinded out as he got a double kill whilst being flushed. And now here under all the pressure, how to just find those amazing kills to come through and really turn that round back into G2 favor. Virtue's listening for some steps. He realized, well, that's a misplaced C4, but he might still step over it. Detonation comes in. You know, in the meantime, is hunting on the horizontal. Has so much place to go. And as soon as like there is any form of Drew putting any pressure down vertically, and he doesn't watch his flank, that's when Uno can come in for a cleanup. And as he is currently looking, there you have it. Uno gets the shot off, but not quite the kill. Rotates back around. That must be a scare, but it was also the call for Drew to realize there's only one on side that can go if it wasn't for the final member to watch him drop. I mean... <laughs> the the second kill was a surprise approaching a door reloading while someone on the other side knows roughly that someone's close hitting the floor getting another kill on the follow through there and then i mean it was the moment that defined the round there's no two ways about it four to two though and you worry that it might start to define the half g2 they've got themselves Pretty much going for the good. It's a, I'm going to say a surprise to a lot of people after the first couple of rounds. Yeah, for sure. At the start, it was definitely like a, a secret kind of deal for the game. Those last two rounds, though, G2 have been able to really fall back into it. Avenger. Just the injury was the teammate, actually, I believe, that came through there because he sidestepped as bullets were coming in from behind and then he finished it off with the knife. 
because I think the, the person was still standing at the end of yeah, the TK. Because I was going to say, like, I, I, he wasn't firing anymore at the moment he went deep, you know. So, you know, just, just using your uh, your environment and your enemies against one another. Just this side top's gone yep. through. Jumping in front of them, falling to the floor. Yeah, exactly. Sidestepping as well, right when they start shooting you so that they shoot their teammates. Uno gets the early take onto Adrian. Shut out. G2, White starts shutting out secret round after round. How much energy, how much momentum can they bring? We saw some very quick attempted attacks. No, it was early takes. We go all the way back to the beginning of this game. G2 had lost two players trying to peek outside within the opening about 30, 40 seconds. Now, the control coming around towards the top of yellow there. Gonna take this slower and steadier, not going for the throw themselves in and plant approach. And we've seen a few different styles and strategies of take, including two shields and a f one of them being a fused shield. That we saw played by, uh, I think it was T plus Kia in Korea. Take a small amount of damage under the bees. It's just an easy pre-fire, but he still gets one before he drops. Savage will fall as well. However, as Jim comes up on the back of the spiral stairs, and he's just a step behind, has the opportunity to strike down five oh! rounds, two. The defuser now dropped as well. And Virtue in a 1v2 situation where he needs to find and isolate these players. But look at all those horizontal line of sides that he needs to be watching. Sends out the bees to get a little bit of extra information. Rotates around to see if he can isolate any of the fights this way around. And as he swings close, he will find a first. Brings it back to just a one-on-one. -on -one. Miracle, the last man standing. He had an idea on where he was. It seems he has an idea with Reese now. And Virtue locks off yet another one. And G2 close to getting a map win here. Huge, huge round for them to pull back. The Solace almost. Excellently swarmed up the top of Spiral, unheard a couple of steps with Pep. And they're able to pepper the back of two players with bullets, but what a pullback there. It was so quick to get the first body, to get the first take, and then from then following it through. I mean, the tag time out at this point, secret. Seems all the wind's been taken out of their sails. This is that tough challenge. I said the week was going to be the hardest that they've played so far. This is one of those that you've got to try and step into. Important clutch to come through and Doom almost managed to save that round. He, he, he was a step behind, but basically for the right reason. If, if he was any, any further than that, they would have known he was out there and wouldn't have just put his back towards him, right? So it kind of worked out for him. It's just that Virtue was unknown at that point and managed just to find that clutch. As he isolates the players, uses the bees to cut down the line of sight smartly enough. You have it, June finding those two. And as the bees were cutting off lines of sight or, or basically rotations without him knowing, he just deducted that in his mind. Like, like Sherlock Holmes, he's like, okay, cannot be there. So it must be here in Connector. Goes to the pre-fire and finds that kill. Virtue, he hadn't been statistically up there. The build into this game, he'd sort of found himself unfortunately at the bottom, but he said there's always the possibility of a player from this roster popping off and putting themselves in these do and die situations. Ten seconds to insertion. And there was the one of do or don't die. 5 to 2 G2. The timeout called. How much of a reward will it net here for Secret? They've got every single site open. It's almost sort of saying, look, this is a fresh swing and a fresh attempt. At the start of the second half. A very cheeky spawn peak here. When you climb up a ladder, you cannot fight back. But a lot of people often choose to repel rather than use the ladders itself. Bandit trick? Yeah, it's going to be bandit tricked out. Will they wait, though, before they put down a second set of pellets? Yeah, it's just... Oh, actually, no, I think there's eight pellets that got used there. No, 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 just for never mind. Yeah, it's just checking. Yeah, they open up the window as well. They've got time here. Zibber Hour isn't going to buy them anymore because Alamau's inside the site. He put all oh. the pressure onto it. In fact, yeah, they do get the it's canister the off. They're trying to get the bandit over. There is Adrian. 
Going for the pop, they throw that second canister early. They can pay attention to this. They made sure they had guns up as soon as the bandit went for it, so they had two of them facing the fight itself. Alamau's forced right back out the door on the back, but there's the back of them. Savage swings. Uno does get one, and the breach does finally fall. Two minutes remaining. The breach open, and Loki and Alamau opened as well. It becomes still pretty tricky. The Monty might have been the lead in force, and although he went very deep, now a rebuild against Doom here. The slight mistake coming through, and indeed Doom now finding himself up on the horizontal. Oh. Misses a lot of shots. Virtue just escapes with his life. But Doom having a man advantage, the impact now taking down Virtue. I was going to say he's got to rotate up towards the top floor and waste time, but as it's a two on four situation now, he's just going to play it from the actual side. Uno finds one. Now we need cover. We need Benja to be watching up from above as this plant will be attempted, I believe, onto the yellow pillar out here as Uno finds yet another one. Is G2 just bringing back these situations where seemingly they're down, they're lost into winnable opportunities. And as he goes for the plant now, 45 should be counting down soon. Benja drops in as well, misses the one in the kitchen, leaves it only up to Uno, gets a quad kill. No way he gets the eggs as well. He's holding now onto the plant itself, tucked behind the chassis, he's off. He's looking for the engagement either side, but Groovy does not hand it to him. The swing is Groovy's to take Uno. Just could not hold on. I mean, four's pretty good. Almost getting the ace back into that round though. G2, they're still knocking step for step on the precipice of pulling this into it. I was going to say, it's just that like the Monty got slightly misused there. I mean, I like the first use, you know, in yellow, watching, okay, the, the, you know, the bandit is not here yet. We see the bandit, they cannot actually uh, trick it actively, right? So that that's good information. It means you can continue onwards. As soon as he passed, though, that's when he started moving in. That's when Nitro started to come through and they started losing those body, uh, bodies on the site. And he just lost your Monty, he lost someone else. There was no more cover coming in from yellow, so the Solus could rotate down and shoot Alamau into the back of it. So they might have gone a bit overzealous there, but Uno, a huge 4K, almost the eight. He just had no idea where the last one was. I think he was afraid he might have already passed on towards the yellow pillar out there as he was watching for it. And then the swing just came in from the double door. No movement had been made yet at that Five point. Left, and if he would have known that, a plan would have gone through. Attackers must locate and defuse a bomb. Five to three. It's not as wide as it was, but you've still got to go. The potential chance of an offsite in the third is a very tricky a one to get located. leveled and to get balanced here. G2's well aware of that. They're more than happy to keep sort of setting themselves up and keep continually pushing. Towards where the engagement's going to go. A very quick read in, Uno. Hope you get anything on the back end of that window. But it's the breach that gets popped open instead. Watching from a box, spotting out some pieces of utility. There's maybe something that can be done about it with either LMI on the Twitch or maybe any of the RC heroes that could be used. And as you see them hunt, well, that's a frost mat. Well, sadly, nothing you can do with the Twitch drone about that. Looking out as well in the end. And this is just like, you know, when you see this happening a secret, you just need to take your time, make sure that your utility stays up, but also be vigilant. Because someone could be coming in out of nowhere. Doom loses the fight onto Udo. Second time that happens. And you know, almost taking no damage out there. Still alive, taking out some cameras from above. Has established a foothold into administration. I mean, really should have been a fight that should have gone Uno's way there. Oh, shouldn't have gone Uno's way even. Making a hole. Getting themselves that extra space on towards admin, getting themselves that wiggle room. You can see they're still not entirely comfortable handing it over. As long as Groovy is in that end of corridor vending position, he's the problem they have to force out. I talked about it before. Got to drop your way in towards the top spiral. Try and force the catch on the player, which is where Doki's gone exactly ready for the rotation. Virtue's getting the drone out, but you still have to force the player to move. Otherwise, they'll just sit behind that shield and hold on to it for as long as possible. You know he's going to be the first step round. The player, the grenade, take onto the fight, goes away from Uno, but look at that flood of secret kills. 
in the top right corner everything pushed back against it to offer some support towards the vending position virtue's a little bit isolated and lost but doki inside the site gets the back end of virtue to get some cover and support a two versus two moment of pause the smoke canister pops for doki to try and see if they can maybe recollect the kit and recollect the information could say diffuser still down slightly far away he's going to take him 10 15 seconds to recover that leaving very little time to go for the execute but they have little choice and quite a way that they've been almost clutching things up they might just make it stick emmy what they have to do now is just try and get the cover around we saw this go away in the opposite situation so the motion has to come through it's to his right the pings come against them but the smoke is the big stop there nine seconds they've got to go for an off the piece plant position and there it is the spray on the soft the catch goes against the kid it's a one versus one he's got a sprint for a fight but it's not a very quick operator out of time you're out of time Trying to swap over to the pistol as well. Of course, you have the LMG. That's an extra penalty onto the movement speed as well with the latest patch. And at a time, things slowly starting to slip away now again. Seems like Secret got themselves away back in. And that's a technical timeout to be called from the side of G2. 45 seconds to discuss with their coach and themselves how to make sure these things go their way on how to make sure that they can actually lock it off because we're starting to lose the advantage here. From 5-2 to 5-4. Still in the lead. But it is dissipating. It's an important time to have this conversation. You have to stop this momentum. As I said, the tertiary site is going to be that big hold. You either generally, you're seeing teams bring the split site and bring themselves into that situation. But at the same sort of stretch of things, if you lose this round, it's too late to take your time out. At that point, it doesn't really matter what you say. They have the mental and they get to talk just as much as you do. You have to put all of the pressure onto the weakest aspect. We're also backing from that into a technical pause by the looks of the top left. So at this point, the teams will just have to sort of sit and stew over what was discussed. See if they can try and bring it to fruition in this secret. Uh, it's really a trial by fire, but you kind of wanted that to proof the, you know, sort of metal. Also, by the way, the players cannot talk or communicate in any form during the technical pass with one another. It's just sitting there in silence and hoping that whatever you just discussed in the technical timeout is going to be worth it and it's going to work out. As you mentioned, yes, this is uh, for G2 a way to maybe get back to form, but for Secret to really prove that they are one of those teams that could be fighting for a top two, could be, you know, challenging for the major spot. And of course, we're still out in best of ones now, and we still have the playoffs to come afterwards. No no one's given a spot right after, right? It's like you still, you still have to play through those best of threes, through the playoffs. But you rather have a top two seed, which gives you that buy, didn't have to go down like the long route which could be for g2 i mean maybe not yet but by the end of the stage they're only five points two away from from it to be um close qualifiers like last chance qualifiers it's definitely not the way they want to go miracles found his ven oh savage as well they got their zen state Close your eyes and practice deep breathing. I think that's very... That's sports psychology there. Yeah, I was going to actually point that out, right? It's like that that some teams have uh, sports psychologists or coaches that have, like, at least a little bit of experience out there. And we always talk about, like, you need to stay in the flow. You need to not let the nerves get the better of you. And what better exercise than to just breathe slow, slow everything back down again. And of course, when you're a player that has a lot more experience, uh, probably Fabian can attest to that, but like, you might not need that as much. Of course, nerves will still get the better of you, but like when you've been there, you've won three assigns, you've won a bunch of majors and pro league finals, you have found your way to find that calm. These players are still in the very start of their careers. I mean, it's not like they're rookies for this season, but you know, it's not like they have been 
playing in the highest of leagues for the last six years, seven years. That Doki finds his calm, just tries to get rid of the glasses headache. I know all about that. Move to glasses. We have the tension. Unless you're short sighted, then you won't need them. I mean, you how short sighted to not be able to touch the bridge of your nose, I guess. Hopefully. Again, oh, they're actually typing in chat to one another. Yeah, oh, they always are. It's just bantering around. If G2 is in a lobby, the all chat's open. I wonder how many teams give their players the instruction to turn off the all chat when they're playing against G2. Holy stun players. I mean, that was just... Should have been Doom's take. Should have been Doom's kill. It's one of those engagements where if you see it on land, who knows how it could have gone. But at that point, you got to give credit there. Of course, the attacker repelling in and being able to get the tail end of it. Not an easy fight to take, even when you are in the online scenario. Here. This is where it'll boil down to. If you missed it just before the technical, it was a tactical. G2's to take. They have to take this round. Repel's also uh, always a bit finicky, right? When, you, when you're when repelling, it's like you have to time it just right, and otherwise you're going to find yourself pretty far as soon as the person Five, comes around the corner. Uh, unless you take it head on. Because then you, know, you just shoot him as a repel in. But the timing is just such a quick movement in such a short time as soon as the repel has started. It was a bit of a 50-50. Unless they absolutely don't know about you. That does. Now, quick entry from Benja down into the garage down below. It's being hot droned as well, just to make sure there's no one actually out here. Playing around on the box, so a lot of vertical uh, potential from the operator from Benja. Trying to see if he can... He only has five kills so far. I mean, he's trying to see if he can try and find the big important kill. I said it before. What are these players with the possibility to pop off and... I'm still going to say the three kills from before we're here is all the way up towards the top of Spiral. You can see the pings coming out on the back end. They're going to see if they can try and maybe force people into this patch. Please get your defaults, guys. That's oh, no. going to be something where you can know that Fabian and Fresh and everyone behind G2 is fuming about that moment that will be seen later on. Alabama's holding the top with the shield. Hasn't gone as deep as he did before. But he's at least throwing out the utility. It's that soft wall on the top of uh, yellow that makes it quite difficult, right? Like, he cannot fully watch towards the connector door like he's doing right now, because if someone is swinging them from that window, that could just be a line of sight that comes into him. But Uno finds the very first. There's a jump out because of the default cam, and Savage finds a return kill. I mean, probably saw that he was on camera setting himself up with the Claymore outside, and that's the cost of a default. Savage is caught a little bit. The sprays around the back of the piano. They can't quite make the music hit. Doki going to get himself dropped and rotated around with the flank watch drone here as Alamau is making a lot of friends with a lot of impact explosives. Groovy's around on the back. Adrian's here to support. They know support's coming and it drops out. Doki gets the double. The swing round goes against them. Alamau and Benja. The two versus one. They know exactly where Adrian is at this point, but he can try and isolate himself for single engagement. Benja's been sitting down at the bottom of the spiral for as long as the round's been long, but it's traded. G2 just get through to map point. You mentioned a very important round indeed, right after your own tactical timeout. You've been at the front doors of, of finding yourself at a map point for a couple rounds now, and they've done it, got themselves on it. That's a point on the board, but they have the opportunity for a full three, and that's what they will be aiming for. Currently four points behind on Team Secret, have the opportunity to get close, but not quite jump them. If they do end up on a similar amount of points at the end of the stage, attackers have discovered the head to head will count. Now, it, is, it has to be said, Team Secret has had an off day yet. Uh, G2 has not. So they will play one less match, G2. That makes this match even more important in their comparison towards Team Secret. They have themselves two solid sites to lock in and lock down. And we've seen some. I'll say interesting dive takes Ten seconds came remaining. through, but going themselves here towards the split site, they're trying to push Five seconds to insertion. momentum, the energy of this game. Attackers objective they can get that ultimate setup. The lockdown there on emergency execute. They're not going to oh, exit even. They're not going to play against the bandit trick they did before.
B2, pressure is on you. He needs to lock this off. And you have one less game to play compared to some of your opponents down on the table. Every point will count. As long as they get into playoffs, it will be fine, right? Because then basically everything has been reset again. It's just best of threes. Oh, should be working out fine. Oh, gets a freebie or so. Just go on his drone or cam as soon as Doki repelled up. That's unfortunate timing. I mean, uh, 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 there's a lot to that. And obviously being on the cams, being visible, maybe they just didn't expect it. But the repel up towards one of the most prominent windows on the top floor hold the steady break and cacophony of pressure comes across from up inside ruby's gonna hope he can sit in the corner and not be caught out adrian does get the c4 catch onto one Groovy's able to get the second follow through uno gets a bit of window based revenge before the spray through the soft as alamouse to take for a second june was thinking about rotating up to provide some help but this is back towards a three and three and 90 seconds left on the clock. He's fallen back slightly down the spiral stairs, still in an opportunity where he can surprise, especially as Alamo is putting his drone in place. I'm not quite sure if he continues. He's definitely not droned out Doom and seemingly doesn't do so either. So the opportunity strikes. He would have had the opportunity, but Doom rotated all the way around. He's in the basement now. The diffuser has dropped, so it needs to be recovered with a minute left. And if Jube is going all the way to the top floor, it might actually complicate things even Attackers more have so. Recovered their diffuser. They said this about Jube. He's one of those blank players that you get headaches when you play against because he just keeps finding new places and new pockets to roam and lurk in. He smells opportunity and strikes. Most others don't even know the oven's on. Virtue's been able to get himself around towards the top. Avenger getting the drop onto Miracle below. This flank over the top is getting more and more important as Adrian would have to try and swing his way back up there. Hit on the drone down the stairs. They're watching it. Does he know? Just covered by the pillar. Adrian gets one. The hop in the window. Looking for the planter. He's waiting for the Benja. swing, but Benja doesn't know. He's to the left. Just misses the tail end. There's the catch and there's G2. Just get themselves over the line. And if you read lips, you know what Doki said there, but that was a longer game than they expected. I just scared me for a second there. The impact goes off, you know, the drone gets knocked. It's just not watching it. Up until the last moment out there. That, that was a scary last couple of seconds in that round there, but they managed to drag it across the finish line. They managed to find those three points on the board and push themselves a bit more into safety for a playoffs position down the line. G2 need to start putting in more and more of these performances and beating Secret, who's on a tear and on a great bit of momentum. It's a very important game for them to stamp out and say, no, 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 we are one of those top two teams. We're the ones that are going to be competing with BDS properly. Talking of, that's the unfortunate next opponent that Secret has to try and bounce back to, which I don't think anyone wants to see, but I know who we want to see, and it's our team on the desk. Thank you so much, Hap and Fluke. G2 break the flawless streak of Secret. And G2 themselves, they get some very much needed points. It, they are very important points. If we look at the game as a whole, though, G2 relies very heavily on their individual performance this game. And I think that we have some players that really took a step up on the individual when it seemed like they were struggling more theoretically and more strategically. So it's a win for them. It's three points, great. But I still think they need to shape up better and more because it's not that much depth to it more than individual performance. That was a really exciting game to watch from, from a viewer perspective. It was really, yeah. really fun to watch. There was Jeopardy, there was, you know, clutches, there was an almost ace, there was 1v2s, there was absolutely everything. What I don't think there was, was control of the game from yeah. either team. I don't think either team at any point really felt in the ascendancy or even inside of rounds that they controlled them. So when that happens, what, what what do the teams do? Well, it comes down to who's got the most composure, who's got the most nerves, and who's got the best decision-making. Ultimately, that was G2 on the day. I think whoever lost this game, and I'm going to say about Secret right now, Secret will be kicking themselves, because that could have been a clean three-point victory. Had G2 have lost it, they also would have been kicking themselves, because every single round fell in the balance, which is crazy to say, given it was consulate, and we know how good consulate defenses can be, but neither team kind of really grips the game and took control of it. They didn't. and. 
one thing that I want to dig in more, you were mentioning composure, and all of that comes down to the experiences of the two teams, right? Yeah. Secret has something to prove in a way. And when you go up against the former SI champions, that's the game where you want to prove yourself. Also, the next one they're playing in the next game, they, they want to prove themselves there too. But this one is kind of like that little bit extra sherry that it's like, oh yeah, we beat the world champions. So maybe they fell for their own pressure that they put on themselves rather than the pressure from the outside. I think you could see it on some players' faces as yeah. well. There really was some pressure on their shoulders for this game, specifically when they got onto gunfights that they probably should have yeah. won, lost those gunfights. Yeah. You could literally see some players grasp for their hair. It's like, oh, how could I? That. How could yeah. I? But they are so much better than that. Then they know that yeah. they are. But you have those games. Everybody can have those games. Problem is when one or two has it at the same time. That is really unfortunate. But starting off the game as well, we know Concert can be very defender favorite. G2, of course, making good use of that. But they started to run away with it after as well. Yeah, and I mean, we can call it defender favorite. I guess G2 obviously got a 4 2 half. Let's not let's bear in mind that they won two post plants. So yeah. it could have been 4 2 quite Attacker, easily. Yeah. Attacker sided for Secret. And that's what I will say about teams thinking that, you know, they could have got more points out of the game. They should, they could have. And in all, like, even if we start on the side for, for G2's defenses, they also tossed rounds in, in when Secret was playing defense. So it's, it was rough for both sides there. We talked about two support players prior to the game. We kept yeah. our eyes, of course, on both of them, but one we still have to highlight even after the game. Yeah, I really want to highlight Uno. If we bring up his scoreboard, you'll see that he had an absolutely massive game for what we consider a support player. First of all, he had three entry kills on that support role, and it's very, very hard to, for you to get that. Sure, G2 play more of what we call the split theory, where there's no real support and there's no real entries. Everybody's an entry and everybody's a flex player at the same time. But Uno today, when that team has a rough day around the edges, that they have a support player that can step up and take this individual performance and just put it on his shoulders and say, hey, it's my game. I'm going to show you guys what I've got. And that quad kill he had in the garage, yeah, sure. They lost the round, but some of the shots he was hitting was moi. Mwah. Love it. <laughs> it was really nice to spectate that from his side, of course, seeing all those skills uh, flooring in his way. But we have an interview now lined up with us as well. We have Titan joining us, I believe, from G2 to answer a few questions for us. Uh, good evening, Titan. It's good to speak to you. Three points. Good evening. You happy or it should have been more dominant? I mean, we can't be fully happy with the performance. We obviously had certain areas where we required individuals to be able to pick up and obviously, you know, take rounds by the grasp and, or, you know, carry us through. But that's obviously the talent and sort of the individual skill that we have. There's areas I think we'll look at, go back to the drawing board and improve on for tomorrow. But generally, I think what this showed is in terms of experience and composure as a team, we are the better team still than Team Secret, even if they do theoretically on paper are the second best team in Europe right now. Titan, now um, if we look a little bit more, I guess, holistically across the whole stage, because we speak to Doki a lot on this interview and he tends to gloss over, I would say, some of the issues. What would you say so far for the season? Because three wins, one in overtime, a couple of losses. How do you rate the season so far for your team? I mean, it's obviously been a bit of a mixed bag. It's been a bit inconsistent from us. We expect a bit better from ourselves. I think our defense half is where a lot of people will sort of pinpoint as that's the point to improve on. And it's areas that we've sort of recognized in the past that we're still trying to make improvements on, developments on, be it either strategically, individually, or even just simple things like teamwork and comms. So that's where I suppose you could sort of say that's the pinpoint and the crux of the issue and well, where we'll see the greatest development and then obviously hopefully that's where the team will just keep growing and go into Manchester with that. So Consulate today against Team Secret, what was the plan? What's the reason that you took them to Consulate? Um, and I guess, how did you want to play against them? I mean, we played how we wanted to play to an extent, obviously, with the exceptions of the individual clutches. We had clear game plans. We wanted to play our game. We sort of knew that they would obviously leave it open as a potential option for us, that or Skyscraper, which is the last two maps that it came down to. And just generally, we knew that if we stuck to our game plan, we stuck to how we wanted to play, we did our processes properly as a team, we kept our composure, and we'd be able to just carry it through to the end of the day. There wasn't anything too sort of drastic or extravagant that was required realistically. I don't think it would come as a surprise that we have been putting some question marks with G2 as of what was have been happening as of recently. So what can we expect from G2 going into the future? More wins, as simple as that. <laughs> All right, that's a very clear but very good statement. Anything you want to say to the fans to close up the interview? Uh, not too much. Thank you again, everybody, for coming and watching our game. I'm glad this today we were able to give you guys three points. We hope to do the same again tomorrow. And most importantly, remember to buy the G2 Fenris skin that's out in the eSports shop right now.
Very important, of course. They'll be thanking you for that promotion as well. We thank you for your time, Titan. Have a great rest of your evening, and we'll speak to you again. Thank you. You too. Awesome. But unfortunately for Secret, though, they have lost their flawless streak. Yeah. Yeah, that's really sad. Cool. There is still one team that has that flawless streak. That team is BDS, and after the break, take it on ends. Don't go anywhere.